Uh, my name is Steph Evans. I run Evotech CA Limited in the UK. Uh, we are a dedicated FEA focused consultancy and also work as uh, resellers or elite partners with MSC Software with specific focus on MSC Apex in terms of our consulting work, training, and also um, technical resales of the MSC Apex platform. So, to get started today, the new MSC Apex Iberian Links. We have a, a dedicated webinar specifically on the shipbuilding and large fabricated structure industry. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with Apex, but I'm going to run you through a number of slides and uh, demonstrations to hopefully highlight some of the advantages that you can have working with MSC Apex. So we'll get started. Okay, so in terms of Apex for the shipbuilding and LFS industries, the key things that Apex allows you to do achieve 10x reduction in model turnaround time. Now 10x, we're using this as a conceptual term, we basically mean you can have massive, massive efficiency gains in building, analyzing and post-processing models over your legacy systems. Apex allows you to make the user experience enjoyable. So many new users and, and existing users liken Apex in some ways to a video game and it can be almost addictive in terms of how easy it is to use and how enjoyable the, the, uh, the majority of the functions are in terms of the user interface. It opens up the analysis process to non-specialists and th this sort of ties in with some of the, uh, the, the uh, comments on it being enjoyable. Apex has always been easy to learn, easy to use uh, and, and that has many advantages, uh, not to mention that many people such as uh, non-specialists, uh, junior engineers can actually get involved in more of the analysis uh, activity within the company these days. Uh, we have flexible license access, so Apex is licensed through the MSC1 license system, and um, which also gives access to other uh, key MSC technologies such as Nastran, Mark and Adams and it can, the licenses can be floated across the company in many different ways. Key uh, functionality within Apex, very powerful contemporary FEA and automation techniques built into a flexible architecture, um, making it very easy to develop models in, in the manner you want to. These capabilities are prevalent, well, in, in many industries, but obviously the, the shipbuilding and large fabricated structure industries um, re rely heavily on robust FEA in the development process. Apex gives you, the engineer, the analyst, uh, the design freedom to develop your current and future products in a manner you've never seen before. Apex is a, is a radically uh, new tool, massive efficiency gains. You can turn around things much more quickly and therefore spend more of your time engineering rather than simply building, analyzing, post-processing models. Okay, so Apex has been on a journey since it was first released about four and a half years ago. So some of the early releases, I'm just going to run through where, uh, where we started and where we are now. Uh, the, the original release, Arctic Wolf and Black Marlin, uh, they were, again, very easy to use, very easy to learn. They allowed faster model preparation and faster model updates. But primarily, they, they were focused as a CAD to mesh type tool and often used in the companion basis uh, for generating uh, partial uh, FEA models, which could then be completed in a different tool set where we perhaps didn't have the luxury of a, an efficient CAD to mesh um, tool set. Then we moved into uh, the next phase of development with Apex, so uh, additional releases. And this is so Apex evolved into. Uh, from CAD to mesh to CAD to results. Uh, so by in, in including the Apex structure solvers, which um, will solve linear statics, linear dynamics, uh, linear buckling, um, enables the engineer to, to turn around models much more quickly. Then from there, we developed the system, or the MSC developed the system in such a way that it became integrated and revolutionized. The, the key thing here was the uh, the introduction of the Apex Python application programming interface, the, the API, which effectively allows macro recording, customization, and, com and complete automation of many of the processes within Apex to, uh, to develop models in the, in the money that you wish. From the 
from these releases, we, we're now seeing a, a subtle shift or a paradigm shift in the way that Apex has been positioned for, for certain users. And that becomes prevalent with the release we're talking about today, which is Apex Iberian Lynx, which introduces what we call the uh, Apex to Nastran interoperability, interoperability or a gateway to Nastran. What this means is that we can now rely on Apex to write out Nastran uh, model files, input decks, run Nastran externally, and then to reattach those result files back into the Apex environment to do all our result exploration or post-processing within the Apex environment. And that's been made uh, possible with a Apex Iberian Lynx, the, uh, the latest release, which, which actually came out a couple of weeks ago. So workflow maturity. So just want to give an insight into how people have been using Apex in the past. And you, you may well uh, see some things that you're, you're familiar with in, in terms of these steps. So before Apex was released, uh, non-Apex approach, legacy approach, uh, typically with, with MSC Nastran focused workflow, people may have used Patran as a preprocessor or even some other third party tool set. Then MSC Nastran as a solver. Now that, that may have been because of uh, certain certification requirements that, that, that forced the user to, to develop results in that format. And then to use Patran or again a third party tool set for post-processing Nastran data. Then with the adv advent of um, Apex, specifically as a CAD to mesh tool, uh, Apex became a companion. So would sit up front in, in the development process. So taking CAD, maybe generate geometry from scratch or a combination of the two, build an Astran input deck to a certain degree, but then rely on, on something like Patron again or a third party tool to, to complete the model build for some of the more complex um, model attribution or load and boundary condition definitions, that type of thing. Then into MSC Nastran and then Patron for post-processing. Then as Apex has developed, we've got Apex as a purely dedicated Apex uh, preprocessor. So we can do the full model build in the Apex environment. We could then run Nastran, but we were still limited to using Patron or another tool to do post-processing. With Iberian Lynx, we're introducing the concept of Apex for Nastran. So the full process, the full Nastran development and result exploration process can be wrapped around in terms of Apex as a pre and as a post processor. So just a, a bit of insight into to where Apex has, has come from in terms of its development journey. In terms of functionality growth, so when Apex was used as a companion tool, so some of the early releases, again, uh, preempting uh, pre the, the, the Patron pre-processing stage, we had some level of Nastran keyword support, both in terms of importing models and also exporting models. As Apex has matured again and become a dedicated preprocessor, we could now support, or rather we could now support more keywords and more analysis setup um, scenarios and more solution types. Where we are today with Iberian Lynx, so we can use Apex as a preprocessor and as a post-processor. We've now got the ability to explore results due to the, um, the ability to read in Nastran results, Nastran HDF5 format result files, and also support an orphan mesh workflow. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the term orphan mesh. Essentially, this means that we can read in legacy Nastran bulk data file information through the, the supported keywords, and then we can rebuild the model either from that mesh definition or through the use of um, what we call faceted geometry, which is effectively mesh to CAD uh, rather than CAD to mesh. And once we've got that uh, CAD from the mesh, we can develop the model and interface with, with new geometry if necessary to, to, to make our modifications or build the model as, as we see fit. Future Apex, all of these um, uh, entity types or these functions within Apex are growing um, with every release. So watch this space. There's more and more to come, but obviously we're focused on Iberian Lynx uh, today. Okay, so how can Apex improve your productivity? So now the Apex supports pre and post in terms of a Nastran workflow. Uh, Apex is now implicit in terms of your ability to work with Nastran. So previously we had companies who 
Um, we're forced to use Nastran, again, from a certification or verification requirement, but um, we're somewhat hamstrung and, and couldn't use the full capability of Apex within their workflow. You can do that now. Apex is undergoing continual development uh, in terms of generative model build, direct modeling technology, model manipulation, analysis, and result exploration with every release, and there's more to come. Mentioned this earlier on, Apex has the Python-based automation or Python API, an environment which now offers build, uh, as, as we saw in previous releases, but also the ability now to uh, automate many of the, the analysis and result exploration tasks. And we can customize the graphical user interface through the ability to, to generate uh, user-defined tools. Um, so Apex can now be fully customized, both in terms of what we call black boxing analysis processes, but also set up in terms of the user environment to work uh, in a manner that, that suits your company's best practice. So Apex's current and future development is driven by a desire to address key industry pains. So the development team within MSC and, and the people out in the field are continually reviewing and, and, and understanding where people in the industry suffer in terms of their CAE or their analysis process. Uh, Apex is developed to allow you to experience the full benefit of an Apex-focused workflow. Okay, so with that said, and, and some general slides up front, we're now going to look at some specific examples through some uh, screen recordings and, and, and demonstrations which are focused on um, chip building and large fabricated structures. So we'll get cracking with that. So first of all, we have the concept of Apex automated CAD integration. So on the left-hand side, we have a CAD model which has been developed using the Intergraph Smart 3D tool. And a, a number of scripts have been developed which allow the uh, ship structure, which is made up of many plates and, and uh, steel frameworks, to be imported directly into Apex in an automated sense via Python script, and to run through all of the geometry build, the assembly model definition, and the analysis with the shell and beam properties generated from the original CAD data, in, in this case, an XML file. So minimal user input, the geometry comes in and is processed and manipulated with properties to work exactly as you need for your analysis process. The resultant model can then be developed for linear static and buckling analysis. So we can just see in the on the screen shell results and bar or beam element results based on static or buckling requirements. Okay, the Apex to MSC Nastran workflow. So again, Apex is fundamental to your current and future uh, Nastran-based workflow with enhanced keyword support. Um, so we can import more Nastran information and we can export more Nastran information. We've got the ability to read in the MSC Nastran HDF5 results files uh, to take advantage of uh, Apex's powerful, very powerful within Iberian links, uh, results exploration and automation, again through the Python API. Uh, looking at those capabilities. So the, the, um, the graphic here is to illustrate the number of keywords supported by Iberian links, shown in the graph on the left-hand side in grey, and those with an earlier uh, version of Apex Diamond Python. And we can see we've got a, a large increase in, in, in all um, supported keywords uh, from coordinate frame definitions, multi-point constraints, RBEs, materials and properties, model definition, and loads and boundary conditions. And then on the right hand side, a, a simple word cloud, um, just to give you a flavor of the, 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 the quantity of keywords which are now supported. Of course, I, I didn't want to show you table after table that you'd quickly fall asleep, but that, that just gives an indication of, of the, the number of keywords that are available. So, Nastran based workflow. So, we'll see this in action. So, th this is a, a typical uh, chip model brought in from Intergraph using some of the uh, Intergraph Smart 3D using some of the Python automation tools. So we can see the, the shell and bar element topology for the full ship and for a subsection, as shown now. Uh, pretty complex definition, many parts, uh, many uh, many entities that need to be connected. So we can we can handle this build within the Apex environment, and then we can run externally uh, through the Nastran um, external solver if necessary. So we've just got a portion of structure here that for the um, the full ship hull. Uh, we, we're writing out the MSC Nastran uh, result file, uh, sorry, model file. So that, that's the 
export data file that's been written out. And once it's written out, uh, rather we can export, we, we can set the model units. So we can switch here. So if you had a, um, a, a series of English units versus a metric set, you can switch at this level. We can run NASRAN externally, uh, either on a remote ma machine or locally, depending if we have an HPC um, requirement if, that, uh, if available. And then we can post-process the HDFF file that's been generated externally and post-process using many of the standard tools that we, we've had previously within Apex, uh, specifically looking for result exploration. So just, just looking quickly at this, this example, so we're looking at uh, shell stresses, vomises in, in this case, and we can switch, just as an example, to 1D stresses. Um, so we can show that for the, the stiffeners, which make up uh, the bulk of the, um, the panel definitions, and see those stresses in, in, in two dimensions. Detailed model workflow. So we, we've looked at a, a sort of global model definition of part of a ship hull. Many of the, the direct modeling and generative tools within Apex lend themselves very nicely to, to building detail very quickly and easily. Uh, much of this is built on, again, what we call the orphan mesh workflow. So we could read in a legacy NASTRAN bulk data file, just, just the pure keywords, no geometry, and then we can manipulate that, that underlying orphan mesh, build the geometry that we need for the the, the um, residual process and develop the local detail as required. So in this particular example, and we're going to look at a, a, a screen recording shortly, uh, we've broken out a local weld zone uh, developed from the global FEA model. So we've used the concept of the orphan mesh workflow to uh, develop a new uh, meshed um, definition in, in a local region, local detailed region, and included some of the weld um, geometry in uh, weld mesh in, in that representation. There are many tools within Apex to connect uh, congruence and uh, dissimilar mesh regions together using edge ties, glue, and discrete ties. And these can all be at automated within the Python um, API environment. I'm going to look at that. Uh, this is a very powerful technique to hone the analysis in critical locations. So if you imagine you've got a full ship model, we can't go down to a weld level fidelity everywhere. We just wouldn't have the compute resource available. So we can we can often look at that large uh, structure on a global perspective, and then to hotspot any regions of concern uh, based on the, the original model response. And we can zoom in and, and dev develop these, these local uh, data models um, and graph them into the, the overall model as required. So just going to look at that in this example. So we've read the ship hull NASTRAN bulk data file back in. There, there's no geometry in this model. We can just hide some of the, the, um, the plates covering the internal substructure. And we can see we've got a relatively coarse definition. We've broken out um, some of that mesh definition and used the faceted tool um, function within Apex to build a local mesh and include some of the, uh, the weld detail. And we're going to look at this in detail in a moment but just to give you an overall flavor of how things are working. So we tied, tied the whole thing together using edge ties locally and then glue the, um, the detail into the, uh, the larger structure, read the NASTRAN result back in. So we've solved for the whole structure and we can look at the, the global model response, again, similar to what we saw with the, with the previous recording. And we can zoom in and then just look at one discrete region, which is the, the, weld, uh, the weld zone, as it were. And we can start to understand what the, um, the structure is doing for any downstream weld analysis, potentially. We can hotspot to pull out any areas of, of concern. OK, so many tools available in Apex. And one thing which is very powerful is the ability to use what we call hybrid modeling. Uh, so where we have very, very large assemblies, and we can use many different element types and idealizations to build a model which which works for us. So detail where we need it, and maybe load path uh, definition where we don't. Key to this is the ability for Apex to respect the, the build or the, the imported CAD data uh, to respect, uh, respect the assembly and subassembly and part definition for that, uh, that type of CAD data, and to, to hold it clearly within the model browser tree which allows us very efficient model generation, query, and visibility. 
uh, we've got again multiple um, element types and idealizations and we can use that to build a model that, that works for us so in this case if we were interested in the the detailed arm shown as the pink pink zone we, we, we've got a high fidelity shell region there but as we as we move away maybe down to the bottom left hand corner we can see that the, the mesh starts to increase in, in definition or in fidelity and we can tie those uh, those different hybrid zones together using some of the uh, the, the glue and edge tie stuff that, that I mentioned previously. One thing which is very useful within the Apex environment is the ability to uh, verify part subassembly and assembly level definition using the Apex structures embedded solver. So what we can do is just look at one zone, solve for that zone, making sure it works uh, correctly on uh, usually on a normal mode basis just to make sure that everything's tied together that we've got uh, the correct mesh that we need that we've got the correct properties the, the 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 structures tied together as we wish and we can see how that that would work there are multiple connection types within the apex environment some of these are new to Iberian links so we've got uh, the the ability to glue uh, non constant meshes together we can use discrete ties which are for the Nastran users, uh, basically RB2 and RB3 definitions hidden within the Apex environment. And we've also got the ability to create joints. So they may be revolute joints, spherical joints, all that sort of stuff, which, which we can use to tie things together. Ultimately, many of these, or well, most of these, the majority of these modeling and analysis techniques can offer massive efficiency gains over your uh, standard CA tool set and one, one thing I'd say here is if you haven't tried Apex then give it a go and you, you, I can guarantee you'll be you'll be very pleasantly surprised about how it will build stuff um, and then allow you to turn around model and results very very quickly over your legacy tool set okay so quick run through of a crane model so we've imported the geometry in the model browser tree on the left hand side we can see how that geometry has been respected just looking at one area in detail, so the, the basket where the operator may be working, um, and just, just using some of the, um, the browser definition or browser manipulation tools to show that we can hone in on a, a particular sub-assembly region, so this, this simple bracket assembly, build the model as required, so we've, we've meshed this, we've tied things together, and then we've assigned properties and material definition. And just to make sure that this very small uh, sub-assembly is working, we're going to use the uh, the Apex Structures Embedded Solver. So we're going to place what, what's called place the model in the analysis scene, and then run a normal mode analysis. So we've got something called analysis readiness, which looks at the model and tells us whether it will it's run ready. Uh, in this case, we're good to go. So we just run the solution, pull out the the normal mode's response, and we can look at. Uh, so typically, this this is a free free modal analysis. So the first six modes are rigid body modes so we're just looking at the uh, 7 plus elastic body modes uh, and looking at def deformation plots for each of the modes we, we can see the model is working as, as we as we intend and, and uh, it's, we're good to go so we can start to build that up now into the subassembly definition so if we look at the larger subassembly uh, so just taking some of the um, geometry out of view and showing the full mesh definition so here we have a combination of a 1D bars, 2D shells, and 3D solid elements to tie the whole region together, or to, to represent the whole region, I should say. So we can work our way around the model, uh, looking at various different entity types. So the, the, these boom strut type arrangements, we, we can idealize those as uh, 1D elements if necessary. Uh, so if we, if we just show the resultant mesh and take the geometry out of view, so we've got very powerful uh, display controls with an apex we can see how the the structures tied together so we've got uh, again 1d 2d 3d elements we've got a transition from fine to coarse and we've also got a transition from 2d to a 1d element representation with with the um, three-dimensional beam section turned on if we just turn that off you can see the underlying beam we've got in there we've actually got some joints in there which are allowing sliding connection revolute connection uh, good graphical display of, of how the entities uh, are represented so we can orient the model exactly as we want uh, we've got uh, glue shown here where we've got dissimilar meshes or maybe 2d to 3d meshes where we can tie them together and we can run the analysis pretty quickly once we've done our internal verification 
and in this case we're looking at the uh, hotspot or the, the stress distribution for von Mises for some of the 2D shell elements and you can see that the peak values shown and we can then just just give a flavor of some of the result exploration stuff we can do we're looking at the 1D stress for a combined axial and bending case and we can see the, the, the stress in, in it sort of equivalent 3D section form put the hotspot display back on and then that, that will guide us to where the uh, the peak loaded or peak stress 1D elements are are found and again we've got um, some local bending going on with these interface um, 1D elements. Okay so talked a bit there about the uh, MSC NASTRAN workflow but also about the embedded apex structures solver. So ju just wanted to, to clarify a couple of things here. So first of all the apex Iberian links MSC NASTRAN workflow supports linear static, normal modes and linear buckling. Uh, this is an example of how the external MSC NASTRAN solver can be used in conjunction with the internal uh, apex structure solver. And this is one example that I, that I uh, put together. You may or may not want to work in this manner, but it, it's there for, for reference if necessary. So step one, you would build the model, uh, modify the model within the apex modeler environment. You could then use the apex structures internal solver to verify, um, certainly for large assemblies, verify the parts, the sub-assemblies, or even the, the full assembly to make sure that the model is working as you wish. If you have a requirement to run MSC NASTRAN externally, whether it's for certification or through a, a computing resource, then you can then analyze the fully verified model with NASTRAN to develop your what we call production level results and then post-process back in the Apex environment using the HDF5 result file um, format. Okay, so some local uh, or some rather uh, detailed enhancements that we're seeing specifically within Iberian links. So we've got a number of geometry enhancements. So first of all, we'll look, we've introduced now the, the ability to sweep and loft um, within the environment. So we'll just look at a quick example here. This is a, a very simple kayak hull, but we're going to loft the surface through the uh, series of um, curves. Uh, so we're taking pretty much the defaults from the, the surface loft, loft tool and just picking a series of non-connected non edges or curves. And as we pick them, we can see the, the surface mapping its way through those entities and giving us the ability to build complex 3D shapes or, or complex surfaces from those uh, lofted edges, or lofted curves. And we can zoom in to show that we've got uh, tangency at the interfaces. We're now going to look at sweeping. So the sweep tool we have within Apex, we just want to generate uh, the, the curve you see on screen. We're going to sweep that around just to uh, generate a stiffener for the kayak. Uh, so we pick a series of edges uh, for the sweep direction and then a series of surfaces. In this case, this is just one of the options to give us the, the orientation of that surface as it goes around. So we can see the um, a preview of the surface before it's built and then the middle mouse button to accept and we've got the full uh, surface set defined. So we've cut the upper face of the kayak uh, with the resultant swept surfaces or uh, swept edges and we can tie things together uh, later on. We've now got the ability to create geometry from mesh or um, CAD from mesh uh, using the faceted surfaces functionality and so we've got a, a thin shell structure here maybe a bulkhead or something from a, a ship or similar uh, type of construction so we've just read some natural bulk data data in we've got some geometry which we've imported it externally which we want to graft into this mesh so we're going to delete the elements that we don't want to, to, to reuse just hide the geometry for a moment and you can see there's a hole in the in the resultant mesh. And now we're going to use the faceted tool, a faceted surface tool, to uh, pick the geometry and allow Apex to develop uh, flat, curved, singly curved or doubly curved surfaces from that resultant mesh definition. And if you look in the model browser tree, we can delete the underlying mesh, and we can now remesh uh, the remeshing operation uh, or the faceted surface rather maintains the underlying shell property that we saw from the imported 
uh, bulk data file. So we're just doing some local seeding to transition the mesh, and we can see the shell thicknesses are respected or shell properties are respected. So if we wanted to graft in this uh, uh, solid mesh region, just uh, mesh th that that piece of geometry as, as uh, standard in Apex, and then glue the entities together across that interface. So again, gluing is a very powerful technique within the Apex environment. Some meshing enhancements. So we've got a number of hex meshing developments. And if we look at this simple piece of geometry, uh, we can break the, um, the geometry up into mappable zones uh, using the um, standard Apex tools. Uh, but sometimes the, the 2 d mesher doesn't give us the element quality that we perhaps would desire. So we can, we can look at surface meshing just to seed the face of the surface for resulting hex meshing. Um, we can see much better definition. Now, when we uh, surface seed this additional zone, the fillet turns yellow because we've got some kind of mismatch across the interface. So we, we've got the ability now to diagnose uh, hex mesh ability or hex mesh issues, and we can see there's a mismatch in the in the seed and the edges. So we can fix that that seed and now push the the uh, the full solid in its entirety. Element quality check and see for the bulk of the region we've got very good quality elements and gives us exactly what we want for the resultant analysis. Uh, we've got edge tie enhancements. So back to the uh, kayak model we just looked at previously. So we've got the, the white zone as one part and the purple zone as a, a separate part. Uh, so by default, we have uh, three edges across the interface. So we're going to use the concept of the edge tie to force uh, coincident nodes or coincident grids at the, at the interfaces and we can show the edge ties as they appear in the model browser tree. And then we can go back and look at the free edges. And we have free edge control to consider edge ties. And we can now see that the free edges have disappeared where we have edge ties. So what, one thing that's new for Iberian links is the ability to transform uh, parts or sub-assemblies and to take the edge ties uh, along for the ride, if, as it were. So we're taking this quarter model and mirroring it in two different planes to get the full model definition. And then those edge ties will be transferred with the, uh, with the mirroring operations and tie the full model together as we require. So we, we just got some feedback here in terms of the mirror planes. So again, Apex very strong, very powerful in terms of giving us user feedback um, in terms of any function that we, that we might wish to, to do and minimal icon hunting within the menus. We, we can do a lot of this from the, uh, the mouse controls, the, the at cursor support that we have. So we can see the, the discrete um, edge ties that have been generated for the full structure. And we can look at the free edge check. And then we can do, uh, again, the internal verification using the Apex Structure Solver. And we can see um, the, the flexible body modes for, for the kayak. We know that the structure is tied together as we wish, and we can um, move on with our next step. Incremental surface meshing and shell element XY orientation. So quick video showing this. So um, a simple panel here with, with a number of holes. One of the holes is very close to the edge. So we've got the feature mesh control turned on around the, the edges to give us a wash of elements. But the hole that's near the edge is too close and it, it, it won't allow us to, to build that washer. So by using the incremental surface mesher, it picks out a feature and highlights it as red when it shows it can't get that feature into, into the mesh. So we can locally modify that mesh control. It will turn green when we're when it's when we're happy to uh, when the when the mesh is happy to proceed, and then we can take the the defaults and and, uh, and we get the, the result washer. The shell X Y orientation. So if we look at the shell element orientation, and this is useful if we're doing downstream hand calcs or anything like that. So we can change the orientation of the local axis for the shell. Um, so by default, or typically, this has followed the longer edge for the panel, and we're now switching those vectors to take the shorter edge. And we can now see the X uh, axis being rotated by 90 degrees for all of those elements. Very useful for processes which are, uh, re revolve around downstream hand calcs, where we want to ensure that we've got consistent load direction output. Uh, Nastran interop enhancements. So we have a number of, uh, well, we, we now have the ability to control the IDs of nodes and elements within the model. We have now have the ability to uh, create uh, user-defined coordinate systems. We can now create uh, discrete ties manually or, or using the automation within the Python environment uh, for RB2s and RB3s. 
And again, a quick example here. So we've got the, the hex mesh definition we saw previously. So we're going to look at some of the um, ID management and the, the node element renumbering tools that's available, first of all. Uh, this can be important for model management with, with downstream processes, if necessary. So we, we're going to set, set the element and node ID to start from a 10,000 series. So we can renumber all of the nodes and elements for that part. And if we look at the resultant exported national input deck, the nodes and uh, uh, grids and elements do, in fact, follow that system. We can create coordinate frames explicitly. So we're going to create a cylindrical system at the center of this um, this machined uh, pipe uh, geometry. And we can renumber the coordinate frame explicitly. So coordinate frames can be used in many ways. So we're going to look at uh, a constraint here where we only want to constrain the internal faces of the, of the, the bracket in the radial direction. Um, we'll see this in terms of the result post-processing as well. So we just pick the faces, specify uh, translation in X, which is effectively R in the R theta Z, the cylindrical system. Now we can create a node tie to tie a 1D uh, bar into the 2D surface. So we just do that uh, with a compliant definition. This is uh, an RB3. Uh, we've got very good control in the model browser tree of the, uh, the ability to manipulate those resultant edge ties, uh, discrete ties, I should say. And then looking at post-processing, we can post-process using the local coordinate frame. So again, we can see we've got R, theta, and Z that tie up with that local cylindrical system in full control of the, the model definition at that level. We've now got the concept of joints within the model, and we talked about that briefly with the, with the crane model. Uh, so we can specify um, multiple connection types between uh, non-connected parts. So here we're going to look at the uh, the joint definition. So pull in the joint form out. Uh, we've got revolute, spherical, cylindrical, etc. Uh, to tie things together. So we, in this case, we're going to pick the internal board faces of this, uh, the, the pink detailed arm, and then tie that into the, the end of the beam element. Middle mouse button to accept, and we can see the joint that's created. Uh, Basically, th this gives us a series of nodes and coordinate frames and RBE type elements uh, in the resultant master and input deck, as you can see here. So all of that information we would have had to build uh, click by click in legacy tools, but we can now do it in one hit with, with Apex. And we can see the, the model response gives us the, the joint definition that we, that we want. Uh, the ability to result explore or to, um, to look at post-process output from uh, the Nastran external run. So we've got the ability to read in HDF5 files. We can look at 0D and 1D probing to look at discrete points such as nodes and elements. Or we could even look at, a, look at a path. So we could draw a curve along a shell face and look at a, a graph of how that um, result criteria varies along that path. We've got now finally the ability to write results out to external um, text file data. So the, the common separate variable CSV file format is now fully supported by Apex. And we can see that with this, this example. So uh, we've uh, exported, we're about to export this, this crane assembly. We can look at the bulk data file that's generated. We can run Nastran ex externally. Of course, we're doing this very quickly in terms of the demo. Um, but then we can read the results back into the Apex environment uh, to look at the, the resultant model output. I just bring the results back in, and then we're into the standard post-processing environment to explore uh, the intricacies of what the model's doing. So we can look at the uh, simple displacement plot in this case, but then we can hone in on areas of interest. So we can look at the the 1D uh, stresses for axial and bending, or any component we're interested in, and then we've got the ability through the probing tools. In this case, we're going to write out a text file that contains all the result information for the stress recovery points for a 1D bar element. So we write the results to a table. We can modify them in this table or sort at this table if necessary, and then read them out to the CSV file for external post-processing. So pretty, pretty straightforward approach. OK, so uh, finally, some customization automation developments that we've got in the Apex environment. Scripting is now supported for controlling the analysis and result exploration. Previous releases of Apex, we could only do this for the model build but we can now do it for the full process. We've got the ability to create custom tools, so we can modify the graphical user interface with user-defined 
forms and inputs to, to um, automate many, many steps that we wish to. So just looking at a, a quick example here, this is a uh, square plate where we've got, um, we've parameterized the macro to just give us uh, definition in terms of geometry. And the, the macro runs, builds the geometry, meshes the, the plate, builds the loading branding conditions, the signs of properties, runs all control through the macro, uh, shown in the, uh, the bottom left hand corner, and then goes, takes us all the way through to the post processed environment to look at uh, results output. So we, can, we get a message saying that the, uh, the macro or the script has run correctly, and we've got the full model built. Uh, th th this is a, a simple example of something that, that I've seen black boxed, as it were, so taking out all manual input, the, a client company. Uh, where we can look at the resultant booking response for uh, a given set of parameter geometries. We can see here that for the first two buckling modes, the load factor is below one, so we could have a potential problem and therefore would need to run the, the script again for a, a new set of geometries. Uh, finally, a last example developed by one of my colleagues, uh, Larry Pierce, uh, working for MSC in the States. Um, so we have a, a script set up to parameterize a relatively complex uh, geometry for a flexible tube. So we've got the custom tool palette set up to develop a user defined form where we input the geometry that we need and uh, thicknesses, material types, that type of thing. Run the script from the form. So once this is set up, there's no user input whatsoever. Um, it builds the geometry, revolves uh, into a, a meshable surface, and then builds the underlying mesh. And then we can um, can tie them together and, and run the result, run the model to see the results very quickly and easily. Uh, again, so a very useful um, demonstration of how the, the Python API can, can help us with our model efficiency. Okay, so to finish, I hope you've seen some of the um, Apex efficiencies or developments which could help you in your in your job and your company uh, your product development. Apex is now really a, a game changer over over above many of the legacy tools you may be familiar with. Um, we hope that, um, that you get the opportunity to use it and benefit from the efficiency.